Folks, it's time for the inevitable. Put your hands together for the one and only Ed Lowe and Johnny Lieberman. Woo. All right. Yeah. Hi. Hello there. Yeah. Uh, and welcome. it's not just about us because it's not we're joined us. by the woman of the hour, I think it's safe to say, Bogey. Bogey. Yeah. Hi. Bogey yeah. from All Girls Garage. Bogey from uh, the Motor Trend Channel. Bogey of decades of experience in the automotive industry and who also debuted a very special car here uh, only moments ago that we're going to talk about. Um, but yes, let's welcome everybody who is watching, who's in attendance, thank you, who's watching on our YouTube channel, on our site, who is uh, listening to the podcast via Podcast One. Um, we're all over the place. We're excited to be here. This is our very first uh, recording of a podcast, of a vodcast, live uh, yeah. out of the studio. Hope it works. I'm, it's going to work. I'm desperately checking to make sure that the thing's actually <laughs> running well, well, and that we're recording. Check, let's have a cheers for Bobby because we'll that give car it to was super oh, cool. Oh, thank so. you. Cheers. Right. Cheers. 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 I'm just saying I'm proud of you. I hope you're proud of you. Thank that was, you. That was pretty cool. Thank you. So, and what we're talking about. Yeah, let's so let's cool. get right to it. Yeah. So, it's um, it's about 1230 right now. This is day one of SEMA. For those of you who don't know what SEMA is, it is the Specialty Equipment Manufacturers Association. It is a big, big, big trade show, industry show, wink, wink, because there's a ton of people here who I don't think have any. I'm just kidding. This is... Um, this I, saw, is a, I saw Magnus Walker walking around. Well, well he's, he's legit. In the industry. He's in the industry. Yeah. So. Oh, oh, is he? Is he? Yeah. He's legit. Oh, okay. okay. This is a big, big trade show. It's gone on for decades. Um, and to have a car here is a very big deal. To have a car debut here inside a booth is a huge deal. To have a car debut here inside a booth tied to a major car manufacturer is basically the brass ring and uh, bogey did all of that um but it didn't come and easy more. And, more. and more and more and, and much more hang on because i, I, I want to say something okay uh -oh. it's been a while since i've been to sema uh but sema is typically a lot of dudes uh walking around the cars <laughs> they built in flat brim hats and half naked girls handing out like press kits bogey pulled the wraps off of her volvo and there was a bunch of girls in flat brim hats uh, <laughs> pointing out the welds they did, where they ground down the metal, uh, where they wired this up. And I've never seen anything like it in this industry. I've been doing this professionally 17 years. I've never seen that many women ever uh, doing like that and instead of just, you know, dressed up and looking pretty. They were actually like... It was it was it was shocking for me to see. I was really and they look pretty doing it. They look great. They look <laughs> exactly. that, that's not what we're here to talk that about. That's not what they're here yeah. for. Yeah, and 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 again, I was I was just like, wow, like this this sh should be how it is. Yeah. This is now how it is, right. and it's, it's taken there. way too long to get to this point, yeah. and it needs to get bigger, um, and, and and more of it. But it was it was it's one thing to know I was going to see it, but to see it was like. Oh my! I, I, I've, I've been to a million shows where the car, you know, the wraps come off a car, and they have like five or six guys standing in front of it taking the pictures. There was like six women, thirty women, however many. We had a, yeah. so, a lot of ladies. We had a lot of ladies. So I, I thought it, I thought it was a very big deal, <laughs> and was. I thought it was very cool. And well, so that was a long introduction for, uh, <laughs> for Bogey. So welcome, Bogey, and let's and let's and let's get into it. What what you did here, but. Uh, Thank you so much Thank for joining you. us for part two of our of our interview on the Inevitable Podcast. Thank you so much for having me. It's awesome hanging out with you guys. I had so much fun last time. We had to do it again. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so you're our, you're our first return guest, by the way. Ooh. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that's and you came all the way to SEMA to come check out the Unveil. That that's is right. true. Got up really early Pick this morning. 4.15 nice. in the morning. Oh, I feel so so yeah. honored. Thank yeah, you. Yeah. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm leaving as soon as this is done, so let's get on. <laughs> <laughs> she might she might be kidding too because I, I feel like your journey here was much much more arduous oh my uh, gosh. than ours this is a um, a project that was actually years in the making right because of the pandemic because yep. of various things so why don't could you give us a, just a quick recap on uh, Iron Maven yeah absolutely so Iron Maven uh, for those that don't know um, is a one-off custom vehicle it was a, a, the third all-female build that I've led at my shop. It's a 1961 Volvo PV544 that we've body swapped with a 2019 Volvo S60 hybrid. Um, so kind of a totally crazy project um, in and of itself. Very ambitious, very advanced and challenging. And, um, you know, if we didn't pull it off, it would have been stupid. But since we did, it's stupid awesome. Um, but more interesting, I guess, and compelling is, is 
that it was an all female build, which is women all over the, all over the country coming, whether it's for a day, a weekend, a week, a month. Um, women traveled from as far as you know Alaska and and other countries, in fact, to come and participate. And um, we had over 150 women all told. About 30 to 40 percent of them had very limited experience. They're either hobbyists or or total newbies. Maybe didn't know what a wrench was when they started. And then the other. Seventy uh, percent um, are all women who are in the profession, in the trades, um, in various capacities. So, really unique and challenging in a lot of ways, and and so much more about the community than it is about the build itself. Although the build is is pretty crazy. The, the build is crazy, and for folks for, <laughs> for folks who don't know and who walk around here, because there's a ton of really cool and really crazy stuff here. Johnny might tell you. You know, some of the stuff is maybe you know shouldn't be here at all. Fantastic! It's all fantastic. Right. What are you talking about? Uh, but the um, don't look at my Instagram. Right? <laughs> but when you look at and you know something about the car that she started with, the '61 PV 544, and the size of it relative to the 2019 S60 Recharge, which is a plug-in <laughs> hybrid, which is a modern vehicle, modern safety standards, crash standards, the amount of widening and lengthening and like building out of the of the vehicle. <laughs> Is ridiculous. Yet when you see it, it's not it's not obvious at all. It looks seamless. It's I mean it looks it's a custom. It looks like a, it looks like a a, a show car because it is a show car. But the um, it looks French in a in the best way possible. Curvy, right? But like 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 small, but not not a, not a micro car. It's, it's very elegant. She curvy. Pre she she real French. curvy. <laughs> you, know what, you know what it looks like? Also, honestly, with with the, the it looks like a. Like the late '40s, early '50s Alfa Romeos, mm. like the the um, ah, yeah, what are they the, the 2600, very beautiful, elegant cars, and it kind of had that from the front. Interesting, had that look. yeah. It's because of the big the big fender, you had, yes. w- which you needed to do. As my understanding is, you guys wanted to keep. I mean, easier for you of this very difficult build if you kept the powertrain dimensions, the drive line and stuff, as close to stock as possible right yeah absolutely I, people are always asking did you cram that engine in there yet did you cram the engine in there yet well no we built the car around the engine so we kind of like we knew we knew we had all of the the parts and pieces of the s60 that we wanted to keep so we had the drivetrain we had the, the engine the rear electric motor the suspension the brakes all of that we wanted to keep as much of that as we could so we basically cut down the car down to that and then started fitting pieces of the PV to it and customizing and modifying as we as we went to make it all fit and work and and really stylistically you know, the vision for it you know, I had a rough idea in my head but so much came out of just necessity it was like okay this is this is where this fender has to live these are the dimensions it has to be how do we connect it and and make it reasonably attractive in the process <laughs> and i think that was for me that was the real the the, the giveaway the tell if you will like so you were at the BASF paint booth, and yeah. very cool color, which we'll get Thank into you. in a second. But they, they pulled the wraps off this thing, and Ed was like, oh, it's got a giant wing because the hood was open under the cover. I was making a joke. Yeah, no, I was no, like, no, no. I was like, Cal- <laughs> Cal- <laughs> Ed, Ed jokingly Cal- said, <laughs> Cal- yeah, sorry, yes, that's what he said. But we thought about it. Then I, I sat there for five minutes staring at that, you know, it's a transverse four-cylinder, but, I mean, it takes up every millimeter of that engine bay, and I'm like, that's wild. And more. There's stuff that spills over yeah. under the fenders, right? Because stuff that existed in the P- in the S60s engine compartment, there was no room for it. So there's a lot of stuff had to be maneuvered and moved around, which makes makes for some challenging service stuff in the future. That'll be interesting. But you know that term, like all eight up with motor. I mean, there right. is not, I, that's the tightest fit. <laughs> well, you, you drop a quarter and you never find it. No, yeah. 100%. Okay. okay. So, but when we so when we first talked, this was was it six months ago. It's something, something like that. that. Where yeah. where were you? How far away were you from this point? Oh gosh, we weren't in paint yet. We were um, we were just getting ready. We were in like the first round of crunch mode, right? So so the first crunch mode is getting it into the paint. Second crunch mode is getting it to SEMA. Uh, we were in that first round of crunch. And you knew the color at the time. You kept it secret we knew. from us. Well, yes. you you had just hadn't you just finish the uh, online competition in, yes. terms, in terms of because it was a crowdsourced color yeah material. yeah so we came up with um, with three different custom colors and uh, myself and the woman who painted it Connie Mangiavinos um, so she and I worked on the colors together we put it out for everybody to vote on and and we just blindly uh, let it be decided by the masses and what's they the picked name? right what's the name of this color uh, it's called Rebel Berry Rebel Berry which yeah. looks like a almost like a, a purplish 
Um, it's kind of got. It's like an aubergine, I think you were saying. Yeah, well, it's, it's the Porsche aubergine PTS color. It, it's really close. It's well, it's, a yeah, color. it's got a lot of red to it, so it's not right. like a typical. We think aubergine. We think kind of like that deep, like deep, Barney deep purple, purple right. right? Like the purple purple. No, no, um, it's a Porsche, but this, yeah. the Porsche aubergine. Okay. Is like, yeah, it's got some interesting. Crimson Okay. Is your yeah. hair? Yeah. Is your hair a tell? Did you um, did you do no, that? No, my hair has been this way for a long time. Okay. Yeah. Because Ed was like, I know what color it is. Look at her hair. <laughs> That's what I'm, and I'm like, you don't know anything. My, That's my true. hair has been purple on and off like since my high school years. Okay. <laughs> so everybody should have guessed. Yeah, right. Well, yeah. My my shop is purple. Like yeah. everything is purple. No, what were the what were the two colors that didn't make it? So there was a, a light kind of sage green that we named she is sage. Uh, and then there was this kind of gray that had a little bit of purple hue to it, a tiny little bit of pearl. Um, and so that was resilient gray. And all three of the colors actually do show up on the car. Okay. Oh, interesting. In the interior? Um, no, it just in random little like the calipers are the green oh. um, up front in the grill where we have the front camera oh, house. Like I, I love we, the grill. Yeah, by the way. thank you. The grill. Thank I you. I gotta say, out of the whole thing that I saw, I think it was it was a crowded booth. It was a crowded. We didn't have a lot of time. But I was just staring at the grill. I was like, "That's really right." Good. I really that is good. my it is my favorite part of it okay, as well. Cool. Like she's got yeah, this yeah. great smile, and it just really it was one of those things where I had this thought one night. We we're trying to figure out what are we going to do with the whole center section of the grill, and I was like, "You know, it'd be really cool if we could make the original S60 grill work." And it was like the middle of the night delirium, and the next day it was like the first thing I did was like run and find it in the shed of one of the parts. We said we're not going to use this, and then it just worked. It just worked. It's so it's so cool because you know so the 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 PV five four four is nineteen sixty one, Volvo they had the Volvo symbol but that they didn't have a modern Volvo grill Correct. obviously, and when I saw that I'm like that's just the coolest thing. So you use the grill mesh basically from and because the opening if you you need to go Google this car just yeah, just yeah. Google bogey PV five four four. Put it on the screen. Oh, right. uh, we don't have the technology. Oh. We do. We do. <laughs> that, that, they'll, they'll be cut into B roll as we speak. There you the go. The magic of video. The magic I mean, of for TV. These fine folks. Oh yeah. Well, <laughs> yeah. it's in the air, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, right there, yeah. But it's got a, it's got a, a a hood opening, a grill opening, probably about five, six inches, six inches tall. Yeah. Maybe. A little taller, yeah, yeah. Maybe two feet, two feet long. And, yeah, you, and, like and you were able to, to actually utilize the, the grill from the S60. Yeah, so we broke it down. Like, we took the trim ring around it off and the housing and the plastic and the this and the that. Um, we did wind up um, painting it to mattify it a little bit. Um, but we wanted to be able that's, to use. That's yeah, what I thought looked so good, yeah. the way you painted it. Because the Volvo logo is not black. It's like a gray. Cool. Correct. It's yeah. Awesome. They might not like us very much because we modified it a little <laughs> with some color. So we added the green to the Volvo and um, and we wanted the front camera integrated. So it was an easy fix was to use what, what they'd kind of integrated already. And we just had the challenge of how do we make it work in the car. So yeah, trimmed it down, created a flange that went all around it. That whole center panel is actually um, the, the first fully like from scratch panel that I've ever made. From nothing, from sheet metal, and a really? couple of the other women in the shop uh, were were also instrumental in making that oh. happen. But yeah, it's kind of cool. I get to look at me like that was my that I'll, was my first. I'll just tell you that Volvo's <laughs> probably going to be fine with the recycling that you did See? because yes. it's of, it, they have a uh, they're going after circular sustainability. So there you go. Right. You want to reuse. We did a lot can, of so. reduce, reuse, recycle on this build. I tell you, we scavenged the pile of like refuge parts, like the things that we weren't going to use. We had a pile out back. And it, it was literally every day they were like, oh, you know what we could use? Oh, yeah, we could steal this bracket from this thing and we can reintegrate this. We, we could use this armrest as a door panel. Like, we did all sorts of craziness. There was a lot of, yeah, there was a lot what of fun. I, what I liked about it, the, the grills, still, still on that for a second, is that it had what uh, the, the term is OEM plus. So, yes. in other words, you made a modification, but it looks quality level, it uh, looks to be the quality level that a manufacturer would put out. Not a <clears throat> SEMA build. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> wow. it, 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 no, it was really He's got good. strong feelings about SEMA, doesn't he? No, we are I mean, on we'll speaker to everybody <laughs> here that you're insulting. I mean, we'll not, talk, not that we'll kind talk of more about that one later. But you know what I mean? Like, it was, it, it, I just, I was stunned by that. I was just like, Thank that's you. really, because I, when I heard what you were doing, I'm like, okay, I know what it's going to look like. It's going to look like a fat PV. But you made something new and different and super, super high quality. Thank like, you. it's, it, I, very well, impressive. and and to go back to what Johnny was saying, like when he didn't get a chance to look at it completely, because right after the sheet drop, and you were like the last, uh, last reveal. So yeah, I think like five I, cars were five revealed. Five or six cars there, yeah. yeah, yeah. Five total. Yeah. Five total. So yeah. you're the last, and uh, you were basically mobbed. Um, it was very hard to get around, and you <laughs> you actually said you got a little emotional. It did. Um, I got a little emotional. Okay. Well, <laughs> let's let's talk about Bogey's feelings first. <laughs> No, you don't talk about mine. I'm mine. just saying it was very, it was very cool moment. I'm glad I got to be. So is it more than just like the? I mean, this was, 
three years? Three years? Yeah, maybe? officially. We started it officially right before COVID and then got shut down, right? So okay. it, it kind of, a lot of false starts there. But it's been a couple of years. It's been, it's, it's been my baby for a couple of years now. And it, but it's, the, these builds are so massive. And I try to explain to people, and it's, it's impossible to until they experience it. Like, I don't really see the car until it's all done like i'm working on it i'm there every day i'm looking at it i'm seeing each step of the process but i rarely get that opportunity to step back and see it um so sema at the unveil is generally that like first time where i get to turn around and look at it and like okay wow like we really did it it came together somehow all of the disparate people and the disparate hands and all of the stuff like came together to make this magic happen but where the emotion really came from was i i turned around at one moment i was gathering the women together to do a photograph and I turned around and they were all there already. And they were, they were surrounding the car. And it was just this group of, I don't know, 30, 40 more women who had had hands on the car. And I, I started to talk and tears came out. And I was like, this is, wow. Like, just to see that many women. I'm so used to being like an only in my career. And, you know, obviously I've met more awesome women, but to turn around and see that, I mean, like we've got some of the ladies here, like they're welling up right now, just watching this. Like it was this overwhelming moment of like, that was power. It was really powerful. Girl gang, indeed. I mean, you, I mean, you roll deep. Like I was, I was commenting like, wow, look at all these t-shirts that, uh, that everybody has. And it says, um, if she can see it, she can be it. Right. Which yeah. I think is uh, kind of encapsulates the, uh, so maybe some of that emotion you're talking yeah. about. And we talked about that, you know, last time Bogey was on, was that, you know, for me, growing up, I was reading Motor Trend. Actually, I was reading Car and Driver. I was reading, you know, Motor Trend. And I'm like, oh, look at all these, like, white guys that are reviewing cars. So, like, there was no barrier, mental barrier. Yeah. And it was really important. And just so everyone knows what a big deal you are, because, like, I don't even know. I was, <laughs> I, I was talking to a, a couple of the women that were around the car. And first of all, they were like, I did that, which I thought was so cool. Like, I did that well, you know. But then one of them was like, yeah, I went to UTI because of Bogey, and yeah, it was just cool. So. Went to a trade school, yes. yeah, and, yeah, and picked up and, and learned more about the, inspired by the by the process. So, um, you know, I look, it, it, it really does, it really does <laughs> uh, bear mentioning that in the, in the BASF booth where this debuted, there were a bunch of other cars, uh, but as I was telling Johnny when I was there, like, look at the crowd around, around Bogey's. Yeah, no versus, one was, no one was looking at that the, Dodge the 800. You know, I was yeah. still yeah. kind of bad. Yeah. Yeah. I still kind of bad. Or the Porsche, yeah, the GT3R, which you know, hey, that's just a race yeah, car. Just a, just a, yeah, like, just a Porsche race like, car. Everybody in the, in the booth, with they, they're incredible builders. They build incredible cars, and I, you know, I always feel so humble to be in the same vicinity as them. I'm, I'm not a builder by. I mean, I guess I, I guess I am at this point. Yeah, I've done are. three, but I didn't start out that way, right? I was a mechanic, and I felt so. I always feel so humbled. And then when there's that huge crowd and this overwhelming like thro the throngs of women, like I feel a little bad for everybody else in the booth. I'm like, sorry, guys. <laughs> no, it was cool. And the other thing was, I noticed a lot of our our female colleagues, other you know female journalists, they were all there. They were, I was just eavesdropping. They, just, a, a lot of them actually wrenched on it, too. Yeah. So I think yeah. em, Emmy and... Yeah, Emmy was, and Lolita. Was, that's what I did was I was leaning over Emmy's shoulder, just eavesdropping. I'm like, ignore me. I just want to hear what you're actually saying, you know. And no, I did. Because I just... It was... it was and Again, they were so passionate. I've never... I've never seen women uh, do that before. And it's it's you hard know? to... It's and a it thing was, that's hard cool. to explain, right? Yeah. Like, why, why does it matter? Why is it a big deal? Like, being an all-female build, what's that about? And... And I've had people ask me, like, why would you have so many different people work on a single vehicle? That had to be so complicated. Like, it's not about the, the product. Right. Like, the product's cool, right? But it's not about it. It's the process. And it's all the stuff that goes into making it happen, those connections, those relationships. And there is something really magical where that pride comes from. Because for the women involved in the build, for myself as well, like, this isn't, it's not just a car. It's, it's an opportunity to show, like, that we're capable to, to all the people who our entire careers have told us that we're not and that we don't belong and to have that energy and to see all of those women for so many of us I think was that moment of like validation and belonging so we've done um, a lot of um, yeah, celebrating these three by the way there's three of them that are crying and I keep looking at them and tearing mm -hmm. up so you know. <laughs> Let, let's not, it, we've done a lot of uh, a celebrating of the yes, vehicle yes. of Iron Maiden. Uh, it's now time for some real investigative journalism. Okay, though. yes, okay, yes. So, I'm ready. Um, Ooh. The, a lot of SEMA builds, um, they might look like they run and they move <laughs> under their own power. Uh, I was not here for roll in. Uh, <laughs> uh, tell the us. She, she does run. 
Okay. She does run. Now, full disclosure, we started her for the first time like two days ago. Wow. So, you know, down to the wire deadline yeah, wise. Test and um, tune is yet to happen. Yeah, we did, we did the first startup. She was up on, on uh, jack stands. And it wasn't until like, I don't know, two o'clock in the morning the next like later where I was like you know we should probably like put it on the ground and start it make sure it actually like rolls and drives not just turns on like cool that it runs but we should check the rest of it too <laughs> and so and it was plugged in in the booth because it is a yes. plug-in hybrid is as far as you know is that system that all system working? is all working yep wow yep that okay. system is working the, honestly it's I'm I'm pleased to say we do have fault codes obviously that the dash lights up like a Christmas tree when you start it but the vast majority of the codes are like it's not seeing the front park distance control sensors. Right. It's right. not the seeing gas, the, the rain sensor, the gas shut. door, yeah, yeah, isn't yeah. it? Right? It's like, oh, your your so, your so headlights modern, are out. And we're like, yeah, duh. Stuff <laughs> right. that you could easily um, every single one of the cars within uh, right. our, our eyesight <laughs> right. has exactly. the same yeah, yeah, issue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. Although the difference when you're working with a new car, right, is that when it sees some of these faults, it says, "Ooh, this is dangerous. We should stop the car." So I'm pulling out of the driveway to go get on the the trailer. And it sees something in front of me, and it's like, "Ooh, scary, danger!" Shut the car into park. I'm like, "Uh," right, <laughs> like right, it's right. got all these like self controls right. doing its own sure, thing, safety sure. stuff. And especially Volvo, they're going to be extra. Safe. Oh yeah, so, yeah, all the so safety. If your belt's not on, if the door's not shut, park oh, absolutely, park. your yeah, hood's yeah. up, open. Right. We're shutting you down. Right, right, right. So, yep. but but can you talk about since we're talking, we're getting emotional. Talk about the. Um, yeah, Ed hates emotion. Uh, no, the turning, the turning of the key. <laughs> Like how many times before it turned over? Or and were, push button. Were you or push button? Were you um, were you like super nervous or you were you like oh crap it took you know so long? Like, yeah, is yes and no. It's interesting. I I to this day, twenty four years as a mechanic, you do something really involved on a car, and there's still that moment of gut where you're like oh when I turn the key, what's gonna happen? Um, but this was interesting. I felt reasonably confident that the, at least the electronics and the engine side of things was gonna work. The big challenge in this build was not as much. On the electronic side, it was much more the fitment, making things fit uh, kind of side of things. So I felt reasonably confident. We also had um, a technician from Volvo, uh, a young female tech, um, who came out who is actually, she's not so young anymore, but she uh, has recently gotten promoted to their technical support side of things. So she came out, she was helping out, and get, kind of we went through all the checks on the computer, we made sure the hybrid battery was, was charged and charging and that all of that was working. and. Um, we kind of we all gathered around and we started it up and I think that first moment was like it's quiet <laughs> and we're like oh yeah that's right, right. it's a modern car right 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 right, <laughs> right, right, right. yeah so um, now that it's now that Iron Maven has debuted here um, let's talk about sort of short term what are, what else are you doing here at SEMA you're gonna do a couple panels for us and, yep. and other things yep I'll uh, I'll be around all week doing a couple of things with uh, Motor Trend I've got uh, a couple of other little companies I'm doing some signings with um, throughout the week I'll be over at the Apex side uh, talking with some companies over there and filming some stuff for Tech Force Foundation okay. um, and and then I think that's I think that's it we've got a little celebration party tonight for all the builders so all, all the ladies will, will get together and cheers to our successes nice what, what happens to the car after SEMA? Right. That's a fantastic where, where question. So uh, right now, it's going directly home to Phoenix, to my shop. Uh, we've got some things we want to button up and, and finish, as, as always, with a SEMA build. Of course. Um, and then we're probably going to lay low for the rest of the year, personally. I need to sleep for like a month. Um, so December is going to be like... I'm checking out. I mean, we are um, in November, so it's officially like, let's I, revisit this after the yeah, holidays. Exactly. Like, let's talk 2023. Yeah. Um, so there's there's a lot of plans in the works. A couple of my different uh, corporate sponsors and partners were talking about different ways that we can tour it uh, around to trade schools, other ways to use it as an activation to get young people interested in the trades, and women in particular, obviously. Okay. Um, so there's a lot that's in the works. Um, and just we'll just have to see how that unfolds. So this isn't the end. This is the oh, end. Gosh, this no. is the this end is the of the beginning. beginning. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, it really is. It really is. And now that we have time to breathe, there's more time for us to start sharing some of those videos and and images of the different parts of the project and how we did the different things, so that um, we can share that. Because during the build, you're just too crazy. You're just too crazy. <laughs> so it might be this might be too early to ask, but. Um, it everything sounds like it went flawlessly. <laughs> like no Worse. problems right, right, whatsoever. Right. Oh, no fighting. Would we'll do it. Would we'll do this all over again in a heartbeat. Is right, that is right. that true, or would you do everything like man? I really shouldn't have. Done that. Or I wish I picked an easier car, or like. No. Um, you, I love a good challenge. Um, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have traded the car or the progress or the the project. I love that. It was a ton of fun. I think the hardest part is the deadline. 
Um, yeah. That's the hardest part of it. If we had all the time in the world to, to be able to hang out with these incredible women and to work and learn and grow and figure things out and experiment and um, I, I would do this nonstop if I had somebody to pay the bills for me. But that's but kind <laughs> of the thing, right? Like SEMA, SEMA is like the deadline every year It for is, people. it's the it, deadline. Because if you didn't, right. people would just, th- these, uh, many of these project cars, this is not their first time here. Correct. They, they keep coming right, back right. In, in yeah. improved in different iterations. Yeah. Um, so well, let, me, let me ask you this, aside from more time, is there anything you would have done differently? Oof. Or that you will do differently next time? <laughs> will there be a um, next time? I d- I, I honestly, I, I, I don't know that there will be, not of this magnitude. Okay. Um, I do, I do plan on continuing to do projects, um, smaller scale projects. But this is, this was huge, and as much as it fills me up, like everything about this process, these builds, they, they fill my heart, they fill my soul. They are just absolutely amazing. There's so much good that comes out of them, and they also, <clears throat> I leave at the end of them e- exhausted, ten years older virgin bankruptcy it's it's passion project that kills me um and i love it and it kills me simultaneously so i don't know this was kind of this was the go out with a bang we'll check in in january yeah, yeah. Was, was, we'll just give it some time yeah we'll, say, we'll do some smaller things but yeah definitely but I i've need. also talked to a lot of not only myself but a lot of people where something big happens day of like done February, March is like that was a lot of fun. You know what? We could do it bigger. I know, but that's yeah. I always equated it to like like having a baby. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't have a baby, but I hear people talk about this. Right? It's like you spent at the beginning, you're like, oh my god, this is so exciting, we're having a baby, and then about halfway through, you're like, this is awful. When is it going to be over? And then you well, know, the, half, well, then no, it's third one, pregnancy. Sorry, one, one week to go. Right, that's right. The, right. One week By to the go, end of pregnancy, you're like, get this <laughs> child out of me. My I'm wife was done with so this. Over it. Whose idea was it? Right. We were we were just real off quick aside. We went like Halloween uh, trick or treating last night with our kid, and we're walking by our old house we used to live in, and my wife's like. Hey Richard, you want to see the the spot where I, the exact moment I decided to have an epidural? Oh Jesus! <laughs> so, but much like yeah. having children, right? Like yeah, yeah, yeah. it's that pain of it. It's awful. It's horrible, right? And then and then a few weeks later, or a few months later, or a few years later, you turn around and you look at your cute kid, and you're like, oh, let's do it again. We can have another one, right? That wasn't so bad. Like you forget about all the pain points. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, you yeah, just yeah. remember all the good stuff, which is how I'm on build number three. Yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> so but there you but go. back to the original question: Is there anything? Process-wise, car-wise, you do substantially um, different. Um, was there a bottleneck? Was there some I, pain point? M- money. Money. Money is yeah. always the pain point, right? Yeah, right, right. This right, is entirely right. self-funded, so um, I to have to have more corporate support. Oh, I'm sure Volvo um, would write a bigger check if you, you know. <laughs> we should ask them. Um, we, should, we, should we should ask, ask them. them, right? Yeah, yeah. But, so yeah, that's hey, always Volvo. the thing. We're probably here somewhere. <laughs> they're, <laughs> they're like, shut, cut the feed. They're right, definitely right. listening. So. <laughs> Enough of this. Yeah, okay, go ahead. Okay, aside from that. Yeah, okay. Yeah, a little bit of money. That's a legitimate that's, thing. That's the big thing. And yeah, then, yeah, and, yeah. and more time, yeah. right? Because it, it's hard doing something massive like this, an all female build. You need that momentum. You need that short time frame, right? But at the same time, doing something like this in two years is insanity. Right. It, Right. absolute insanity I've had several builders say this to me already like you are stupid like right. <laughs> <laughs> well I mean and it's not just the, the project itself but the way the way you right, did it and yeah. wanting to involve so many people as you mentioned 150 and women rank amateurs and including amateurs who know nothing about that's a lot so of it's, time yeah it's yeah. a it, you know end of the day it's the you, it's really the process and the yes not, not so much the product although the show and this event is it's you gotta show the thing off right so. right no absolutely um, so hmm, interesting. I w- that was a curveball. I wasn't thinking that this would be Bogey's last ride. I mean, uh, you know, I, I was thinking oh, maybe shoot. maybe a full electric vehicle or something would, would be coming. Like we'll another. see, we'll see. I'd like to always have a project going. I just don't want to have this kind of deadline for it. You know, if it if it winds up going to seem a cool. But if we do, if we have a build going on at the shop, I still want to keep that energy going, right? Women coming in from all over the country, working together, figuring things out together tackling projects where none of us know what the answer is and we're all like okay well like it's science day at the shop we're gonna we're gonna try some experiments and and we're gonna f up royally and hopefully somewhere along the line we'll figure some stuff out like that's fun i want to keep doing that you know this build was fascinating to me because i've seen a lot of you take an old car you you make it an ev 
But I haven't seen you take an old car and you make it a hybrid. Like that's, <laughs> it's gotta be. Well, because why like unique? Why make things easy for ourselves? Right, right, like right. let's make it as complicated yeah, right. as we two, can be. Two power trains. On the plus side, you know, we thought at the end, even if one of the systems didn't work, at least we'd still be drivable in one of the other. <laughs> You know, <laughs> I was I was just that, gonna say that, that, it was our fail safe. No, it was not intentionally I, I, that yeah. way. If you wanted an easier, a slightly easier project for the next one, you could just go full EV because it is fewer, literally yeah. fewer moving parts. Yes. Yeah. things two, are smaller. Two moving parts. Right, you got a motor, you throw some batteries. Yeah. So much room for activities. Right, yeah. so then, then it just becomes more about the the creativity you want to, yeah. how how deep you want to go. But also, that's a great point. I, I was years ago, I was driving a Subaru hybrid around Iceland. And we were crossing really deep, much deeper than they wanted to, rivers, and the hybrid system just shorted out. Oh, geez, but we yeah. still had a gas engine. So it's like, hey. It's your right. backup plan. Yeah. It's great. You know, it totally works. It's great. Yeah. So, <laughs> so let's say that we'll, we'll revisit the, the conversation about um, <laughs> project cars with Bogey at a later date. But after your uh, spectacular holidays, a bit of a break through Thanksgiving and Christmas. 30 day nap. 30 day nap. Um, what, what's. Um, and of course, all the touring you're planning with with Iron Maven. But what else, or what other projects are you working on? So you know, there's a little bit of a it's it's kind of time for a rewriting of things a little bit. I think in my life, um, trying to create some space for some different things. I've started actually doing some consulting with some of the manufacturers, doing some consulting with Volvo um, with their mentorship program and their new technician cool. program. So hoping to do more of that. And um, you know, part of what was so cool about this build, from kind of a, a big picture standpoint, was some of the changes that Volvo's kind of initiated within their organization to to kind of address this this issue that I brought to them around women in the trades. And they've they've taken action, which is really cool, and they're reaching out for, for some guidance on that, which is great. And they're listening, and they're doing, and that's phenomenally cool. But it's given me this taste of, okay, this is awesome. What I've been doing has been a lot of fun. I get to you know be a part of a lot of women's stories and their lives and their, and their challenges and successes. But... Um, like, can we take this a step further and really make some changes within the manufacturers and how they do business and how that experience is for women in the trades coming up? I mean, outside of the direct connection you've made with the women on the project on Iron Maven, has there been, did it, did you, do you feel like you succeeded in other ways and sort of driving awareness or, have, you know, have other companies or yeah. other potential, other sponsorships come out of this in, 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 in the shape of, um, driving more awareness or involving more women in the in the field? I think so. I think so. I think there's kind of multiple pieces to it. You know, you've referenced the shirts, like the if she can see it, she can be it. Like there is a lot of, and I hear it all the time, women who are saying, oh, because I saw you or, or the women in the build or these, the build in general, it inspired me and gave me the confidence to go try it myself. So there's that piece of it. But I think really where I see a lot of changes start to happen is when the men who have shops or our service managers or our, you know, whatever it is in their shops, uh, they see the build, they see the women, then they go back home and the next time they encounter a young female technician, they're more open to it. Right. And so I think we start seeing that change happen in that way. Um, and then similarly, you know, with I was saying with Volvo kind of creating this female technicians forum to connect the women that they have working for them and saying, yes, this is a real issue. We didn't realize that women in the industry really do need, they, they need some support. They need to feel validated, they need to feel welcome. And um, by providing that additional support, we might actually retain them in the industry and help them succeed and grow and thrive. So the fact that they're doing something about it, that's that's my die happy stuff. It, like it really is. Um, and it'll make Volvo better. I mean, that's, I always yeah, say. To like, 100%. If you're turning off half the population, you're missing out. Well, you know, so. 100%. Let's, yeah. um, okay, back to Motor Trend in, in Investigations. Yes. Let's, um, <laughs> let's call them out. Like, okay. um, we'll, we'll go, we'll play good cop and then bad cop. So, uh, Volvo's covered, right? Like, yep. they, they, they invested in you and your program. They helped involve their own techs, yep. as well as people you brought into the mix. I think BASF, uh, phenomenal. phenomenal. They, they made a, they made a home for your vehicle to debut. Um, they talked a lot about their involvement in, on the female side as well. Yeah. I'm not aware of any other spot. Who are the other So sponsors? one of the other big ones was Stratasys 3D printers. Okay. Um, so we worked with them, which was really cool as well as women in 3D printing, which is a, a nonprofit organization of you know, women who are in the additive manufacturing field. And so there's a lot of work with them. Um, and so that was a really phenomenal thing as well. Um, we had a number of great sponsors step up and, and really express their commitment to supporting 
uh, and bringing more women into the trades. Okay. Now we play bad cop. Okay. Um, based on your long experience uh, in the industry, uh, you've seen, because we talked about this last time, you've, you've sort of s- seen the bad, you might have seen some improvement. Now, you said 24 years as a mechanic, where is there still a huge gap? Like what... Are there specific industries? Mm. You, you don't have to call out companies, although yeah. it would be, be super fun yeah. right now to name names. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would be, but, but um, I won't. I'll restrain myself. Right. If it's them. It, it's like, or inside, you know anybody I mean. inside? Yeah. Booth number what? No, but how about categories? Downs. Is it like, uh, oh, man, the guys, the, I mean, yes, the guys who work in the tire business really need right. a, a talking to or is, so it, is there specific you're not category? you're not gonna like this so magazines, the magazine with, guys well, I got no it, no it's not not actually the magazines tend are actually getting better they're probably the leaders in this because i think it's become like not okay or became not okay much sooner in print than it has in like real time um for a lot of the behavior that's not okay but um it's it's kind of automotive mechanical as a whole so through the Iron Maven and through the all female builds in general, I'm working with welders and fabricators and painters and body techs and um, all of these other different kind of adjacent trades. Um, and it's the mechanical side that is by far the most lagging. Um, still, right? Because it, has, it still. basically hasn't changed it's, it's, or yeah. changed a little bit. It's, it changes in pockets, right? So I will, ha- I, will, I will talk to women who have experienced amazing support and amazing shops that are welcoming and inviting and where it doesn't matter whether they're a male or a female, just are you willing to do the work? Are you interested? Are you, are you eager? Cool. Um, and then, then, then it's the polar opposite when you talk to somebody else where they've had zero support, nobody will give them a chance, they've been right. told outright, we don't hire women, that's not gonna happen, um, or they've been sexually harassed they really, they or treated really poorly. Oh gosh. Hire women? Oh yeah, I've had women point blank be told I would never hire a woman to work in the back of my shop, ever. It's, it's like the military used to yeah, be, right? It reduces right. operational effectiveness, right? right? right. It's a distraction. Except it's that a, distra- was, that it's was a distraction. 35 years ago. Right, but people still, so it's, so it's yeah. pockets. Yeah. So there's yeah, yeah, areas yeah. that are awesome, and so right. you get these really disparate experiences from women. Like some will say, I haven't had any issues. And then others are like, geez, like I'm thinking of giving up because this, right. this is too much. Happening. This is too much. Right. Yeah. Right. Is, it a, right. is it a big city, small city? Is it a regional thing? Or is it- <clears throat> I've been trying to pinpoint that. And I, I, don't, I don't know. I really don't. I think in, it's sometimes the bigger cities are more open and more progressive around, about having more diversity within the shops. And then sometimes it's the smaller communities where it's like, you know, you're in a farming community. It didn't matter whether you were a boy or a girl. You're helping fix that farm right. equipment because you right. got to get that that so, yeah. thing yeah, harvested, yeah, yeah. right? So it becomes, it's different. I don't know exactly what the what it is. I was talking to one of the, the fathers of one of the women uh, at, at your booth. And he was like, look, I have six daughters. I taught them all, like, you know, how to work on their cars. I told them you don't need a man. And only one of them now is working as yeah. a mechanic. And I'm disappointed in the other five. And I was like, really? You know, that's <laughs> interesting. So I was wondering, like, do, do, do men with a lot of daughters or maybe are more open? Yeah, again, it goes or both. This guy could have been again, it goes totally yeah. both yeah, yeah. ways. I talk to women all the time who say I've always been interested in cars. My dad always told me I wasn't allowed to. Right, and then on right, the flip right, side, right, you have right. the dad saying like I want to teach my little girl how to do this, or I'm disappointed that my little girl isn't interested. In it. I get asked all the time, "How do I make my little girl be interested in cars?" I'm like, "You don't. That's not how that works." Well, that's that's, that's one, of, <laughs> one of our colleagues. I can name drop Scott Oldham, uh, big big car guy, and uh, he uh, he has two daughters and. He's Maybe three. He's like, they don't like cars. I take them to NASCAR. I take I'm them to the track. Into it. They hate them, and it drives them crazy. It's easy. Right. Just withhold love. Oh Jesus! <laughs> sorry. Sorry. That got deep. Right. 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 Wow. Well, we can talk about Ed's mom <laughs> on the next show. Oh wait, sorry. <laughs> uh, so okay. So, but to be clear, so we're talking about um, primarily um, auto, automotive. Uh, Auto tech mechanic shops, yeah. basically hiring the women to do the actual greasy part under yeah. under hood, under car. I think there's just still a lot of of holdout of old mentality right. of they don't believe it's possible because they haven't seen it, and so there's sure. this belief that that uh, that women can't do it, that they're not really interested in it. That's just going to be a fleeting interest. Um, uh, interesting, yeah. yeah. And there's just a lot of there's just a lot of old mindset that has still really stuck around. And then a lot of it too comes from purely just not really thinking about it, right? Right. They like, oh, I didn't even think about the fact that we don't have a locker room that has a lock on it. But that, but again, this is right. why it's or, you're, you're, or you're, uniforms that fit or, or your motto. You know, she can see it, she can be it. It's so important. 
Yeah. Just not only she, he can then believe it. Yeah. Right. So right. It's, yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, so it's this is really an unfair question for you. Uh-oh. And so I'm not I'm not going to pose it that way because, <laughs> you know, if anybody should get a pass on trying to think of more solutions for this, it should be you because you have. <laughs> no, I mean you've been, you've been on all, all girls garage, right? You've been sort of pioneering um, this side from the entertainment side, but then also putting your passion and your money and your business where your mouth is and doing your own. Uh, your own garage, your, just your own business from the very beginning, employing women, and then doing, moving on into this much bigger realm outside of the entertainment piece. I'm talking about three projects, women, you know, behind all of them. If that, if you still feel like there are like huge pockets uh, where there's more work to be done, what else? <laughs> like, yeah, what, what, yeah, what's well, the, what's another big idea yeah. that you you might have had? You're just like, but that's gonna be you know somebody else can do it because I'm tired. <laughs> um, I I think I, I think it's exposure and it's time. So much of it, we can we can do these big broad strokes for change, right? But really, it comes down to individual hearts and minds, and the more individual conversations we have and interactions we have, and it takes it takes time because no matter how big of things that we're doing. There's still, you know, most people have no idea who I am or what I do or why it matters or what this all-female build thing is. So even 98% of the people here at SEMA probably have no idea. And so there's there still is that lack of exposure for what women are capable of and are doing in the trades. So exposure is a big thing, I really think. So thank you guys for helping with that. I appreciate oh, yeah. it. Hey, our yeah. pleasure. <laughs> well, no, I mean, thank you. Because you're, you're, you're doing it, you know, at the same time as you know, entertaining people, still doing, you know, the shows that you do and then doing these big projects that are getting a lot of um, exposure for, for all of us. Um, well, I have, a, I have a question. And this is, this is sort of uh, back to, like, what's next. Have you thought, and again, I, and, and I, I really spent a lot of time looking at car design. It's kind of one of my passions. You thought about doing more design work, like just based on what you did on that front end of that thing, because it really is. I appreciate like, that. It, it, well, you're welcome, but like that's that doesn't happen by accident, you know. You can, I you mean, can, I'm a very like instinctual designer, if you want to call it that. Like, I'm not trained in any sense. I don't know angle. Like, seeing me struggle through designing my own hood hinges, like. There were some beautiful mind moments. I'm on the floor with paper and stencils, and I'm trying, I'm like, I wish I knew there was, I'm sure there's a formula for this, and I don't know it, and so I'm drawing, and I'm measuring, and like, I am not, that. that is you not can, me. You can learn all that. I'm you just read, that person who says I think it can fit. Well, like. <laughs> and, is it, and not to, and not <laughs> to take good. away, not to take away from the, the design, <laughs> but, our, but, but I think, some of this was really form following function, right? Like you were, it was. you were constrained by that's what design this. is. Yeah, and right? then making it, then trying to make yeah. it pretty. Because the PV, I like, I love the PV, but it, that is not an attractive car from the get go. <laughs> it's like, it, it, it's it, wide it looks old. and flat and old. and old, but like just in its native form, the PV is like, what happened to your front end? Did somebody sit on you? Like right. what happened? Right. It's not attractive. And I knew from the beginning that was going to be the biggest challenge. I'm glad we're finally talking about this because I'll be honest. When I first heard <laughs> you guys did a PV 504, I, I was like, well, like, why? to be honest, I Googled it. Then I was like, why? The like, only good one, there was there was like a rat rod one that lived in my neighborhood that was like, you know, black wheels. It was, yeah. it was primered, slam chopped. And that one looked good. But all the rest you of know, it's a real fuddy-duddy. It's Anybody funny. who knows Volvo and you say, oh, they, they, did a, a, they did a concept car and it's the P, P you're like, oh, P1800. Like, yeah, oh, no. Gorgeous. P1800 is no. beautiful. <laughs> right. P, yeah. V544, maybe no. not so much. Yeah, right. it's, did it's you different to, P. Did you get to pick? Were you involved at all? Or did Volvo just say, hey, take this? No, we actually had the PV544 that we were in the process of restoring before Volvo yeah. came on board. Oh, I, I approached Volvo. We had They actually wanted me to do a P1800 instead. I was going to um, say that would make more. Yeah, a little bit more. That's what they wanted. Now I like this better, but right? I like the underdog cars. Yeah, yeah, I like the yeah, goofy yeah. ones that nobody knows what they are. They walk by and they're like, "What is that?" Right. <laughs> it's not so obvious, like bringing a Mustang or a Camaro to right? SEMA. Right. Well, and that's <laughs> the sorry, point. Sorry. It's sorry. that you mean a Bronco? It's the conversation the Bronco, sorry, Bronco. starter. Right. Like that's the whole thing. Like these right. doing these cars is, it's it's so that we can talk about it. Right. <laughs> you I mean, know? I mean, it's a honestly, big coffee the table last book. time I saw any media on a PV. There was there was a movie of that the, 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 it opened the day that I forget which one Norway or Sweden switched from right to left hand drive and there was a lot of sobs and and PVs like having to like everyone was confused and they had to drive on the wrong side of the road suddenly 
And, you know, that was a is that when they got movie. their reputation for off-road driving? <laughs> no, no. Because apparently the PV was like a good rally car. They were used in no, rally th- cars. They're the best because they're you know they're they have permanent winter for half the yeah. year. You know, I mean, it's like no no daylight. No, right. no, nothing melts for six months. Yeah. So yeah, they're all you know the best rally drivers come from well Finland. No, but the but PV itself was known as a good yeah, rally car. Sure. Ah, rear drive. You know. Yeah. yeah. Red tires, good to go. Right. So um, yeah, this this I. I didn't have my notes in front of me. I did want to ask you a question. It's a little awkward. Uh-oh. Uh, no, it's fine. I'm, I'm king of awkward. And, <laughs> you, really and you've is. been great, and you've been great yeah. so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, you know, and we talked a little bit about this in the first episode, especially because Johnny, Johnny's been way up in front on, on, on Media for Motor Trend, on YouTube in particular, and has, has dealt for many years and has now made sort of a, a running joke about the, 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 the type and quality of comments mm. he gets uh, on, the, on the content he does. Oh, you mean that YouTube's a streaming video service built atop a sewer? Right, yeah. basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, now, when we when we did our first uh, episode of The Inevitable with you, we put it up on the site. We put it up, obviously, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify for the audio people. And then for video, it's hosted on our YouTube channel, which has 6.7 million subscribers. There were some comments there mm-hmm. that weren't particularly awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And um, you felt the need to um, to tackle it head on. And um, which, you know, I'll be honest, I have very mixed feelings about um, I I've been in a position for a while where I, you know, have some input into who who gets who gets exposure on what platforms. And I feel protective of, of the female staffers that we have. There, sure. are, there aren't too many. But when they're up there, like there's always and it's a terrible thing that I have to say, like we have to say, well, you know, we'll put it up and we should turn the comments off or. Well, well, we'll turn. We'll make sure right. that our comment moderators. Right. The are, fact that we have to think about uh, that at all. Is exactly. A, so I just wanted to flag that because, mm, well, hopefully people who are watching right now might think twice before they do anything. <laughs> but also, just, they won't. They won't think once. They that's, won't think once. Right. That's, that's right. The, right. That's the issue. But yeah. So yeah. do you want to? I don't know if you want to touch on that. Yeah. My my favorite of the the theme of those comments on that post in particular were were these like I don't believe it sexism doesn't happen in the automotive industry it doesn't happen she this isn't a problem she's making this up and I'm like really white man right. you know about what the experience of women in the industry is that's right. cool right. that's cool like it was just this incredulous fact knowing like right. you are lying that doesn't happen right right okay <laughs> <laughs> I can I can see how I mean it's essentially you 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 totally you're hundred percent getting mansplained too. Oh right? god, right. yeah, right. and right. and being called a liar for saying right. that it's challenging for women in this industry, like, and or saying that maybe and this is my favorite, like maybe there aren't more women in the automotive industry because women just aren't that into cars, right? Because I've I've heard this from from a, a sponsor that I I courted. I wanted to have this project idea that I wanted to do. I thought it would be a great fit for this particular company. Reached out to them about it. And he's like, we just don't have that many female buyers. I said, do you talk to women buyers in your audience at all and in your advertising at all? No, because they're not interested. Well, that's why they're not interested because you don't freaking tell them about it. Right. Like you're not talking to them. Right. So how do you know if they're interested? How do you know if you're going to like cars unless you get a chance and an opportunity to play with cars? You just don't know. So using that idea of women just aren't into cars and that's why there aren't that many women in the automotive industry? BS. I call BS on that. Oh, it's absurd. Right? Yeah, it's, abs- Expose it's absurd. Expose all men yeah. and women. Expose all little boys and little girls to the equal things, to the same things. Expose them all to everything and let them pick what they want without any restrictions or barriers. Then, if still women don't choose automotive, then cool. That's excellent. I believe you. Yeah, yeah, and, that's and, excellent and, parenting yeah, advice. Yeah, by everything. the way, I mean, I could, you know, I could bring uh, my my friends up here. They don't know what a car is. My guy friends. Right. They have no, they have no idea. You yeah. Know? It's not all guys like cars. Yeah. It's, some guys, pretty small, you know, pr- pr- proportion of the population are really into cars. You know what I mean? It, it's it's not like it's some like you know you're male, therefore you like cars. Not at all. And there like, are so many women who have always wanted to learn more. Yeah. And have have yeah, not had that opportunity, or have been, been literally held back from it. Right? My parents' generation. My mom wasn't allowed to take auto shop in high school. Right. Like sure. that wasn't a choice. Sure. They sure. just wasn't allowed. And, sure. and and as the mansplainer was basically telling you, like it, when you when you um, deny somebody's lived experiences because uh, you don't believe it and you feel like you're right, or you don't market to people directly, you it's just creating. It's a self fulfilling prophecy. Right. So 100%. why? Like it, it's it's ridiculous. It goes back to what I was saying though. I mean, it, it's insane to not advertise 
to 100% of the population. Right. If, right. It, if you really are a capitalist and you really believe you're going you're gonna to sell stuff to everybody, sell stuff to everybody. everybody. Yeah. Don't do this like, eh, and this that's is all where, we're ever going to be. Well, and that's where the science comes from, right? We talk about companies are more successful when they have diversity, right? It's yeah, been yeah, proven yeah, time course. and time again yeah, that yeah, the yeah. more diversity a company has, the more successful they are. Because a lot of times, some of these companies are not, it's not that they're not advertising or marketing or speaking to women because they don't want to. It's because there's no women in their organization and they just don't know how to. Right, of like, they just yeah, don't they, know. Yeah, 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 so yeah, when you yeah, add yeah. more diversity to your organization, you now have the ability to speak to a more diverse audience, therefore making your business a stronger business. Ergo, right? <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was going to say, because you mentioned, like, your mother, and it, there is a sort of a generational aspect to this, and I do look, I look across this audience, I look across our staff, at, at, I look across the people, our colleagues at work, and it's always the, and I'm probably going to tread into some right, right. HR stuff. Right oh, here, this is like, fun. This is getting juicy. No, but like, just I know that the the younger generation is so much more open minded mm. about a lot of stuff. Everything. Everything, to to some pain at some points. Like, let's talk yeah. about how much we all make. Sure. Like, let's yeah, not yeah, talk about yeah, that yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, let's yeah, let's yeah. really make some problem for everybody. Yes, that would that's uh, problematic. But, um, you know, I was thinking like, boy, this this sounds like something that could be solved just with time. But it doesn't happen by itself unless Correct. some of the exposure happens and people are leading the way and giving opportunities Correct. to a generation. It takes, it takes work, but it also does take time. Because right. change never happens as fast as we want it to. Right. Right. By the way, hey, Justin Bell is taking a photo of you right now. Oh, no. Hi, hey. Justin. You should be on here. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Yes. You're, um, not, you're not on mic, Justin. Right. Um, Look, we'll have to show you how these podcast things work out. <laughs> Host of the talk show, ladies and gentlemen, Justin Bell. <laughs> so uh, we we went a lot of places. Uh, yeah. We we did some investigative journalism. I like that. Um, but I want I want to make sure we end on a, on a happy note. Oh, okay. So yeah, we, yeah, So yeah, we've yeah. talked a lot about um, your sponsors. We've talked a lot about the folks that helped the project along. That made that made you uh, that made it possible for you and the team to get here. How about? individual all-star contributors Ooh. are there any oh any girl girl gangsters girl <laughs> gangsters like that uh you want to call gang out stars. Your gang stars you want to call out in particular and this is going to actually be a tough one because you will invariably forget somebody and just feel terrible oh gosh, afterwards I know. there's so many so let's um let's caveat that oh. to say you know we can't you can't thank everybody but are there folks in particular that you think like, wow, really deserve mention for, for help with this project or, or others just along the way? Yeah, th there's so many. And obviously every single woman who participated in the build is part of making it happen. But they're, I, my core local team is I, like, they can't go without mention. Like they um, are, are there, you know, out of towners will come for a week, maybe a weekend. Sometimes, sometimes they'll come out two or three times throughout the year and it's intensive and it's amazing. And, um, and they all, I, I love every one of them for, for their own reasons, but the local team who comes out like sometimes two, three, sometimes four or five times a week, especially during crunch time, like their heart and soul is, is in these builds just as much as mine is. Um, there's my, uh, my, my right hand sitting over there um zena who has uh, been kind of by my side on this build since since right right around when we were conceptualizing getting the s60 so she's been like really involved in it i, I as invested in it as i am um my my admin monica who was involved in the build as a builder and then became part of girl gang officially um just there's so many but the local the local gang they're like our ride and die. <laughs> okay, I like that. Um, and because knowing our audience is like ninety-eight percent male, um, <laughs> ninety-six point three. I don't want you to call out any. Um, I'm going to assume, but please correct me if I'm wrong, that you that you might have had some uh, male advocates along the way that were super helpful. You don't need to name them, but please call out some specific qualities of. Uh, what it means to be an advocate for Absolutely. for this oh, kind of yeah. stuff. And That's a great question. I appreciate that. Tell the men out there listening how yeah. you can be more supportive and helpful. I appreciate that so much because there's so many different ways. You know, we either get told we're, we shouldn't be in this field or we get overdoted upon like, oh, you're a woman in the field. This is amazing. You're a woman. Yay, right. we're going to put you on a pedestal. And neither of those are good. Um, we... I have this one mentor in the industry who's been kind of a supporter since the first build, and his behavior is is perfect. Um, he's a teacher and he's a girl dad, so he has that in him naturally, right? But it's 
he comes by I call him up I say hey I'm like I'm up against the wall I don't know what to do with this thing he comes by he's like alright let's work through it together he gives me some tips and I'm in desperation sometimes and I'm like alright like when you just just do it for me because you clearly know what you're doing and he's like so here's the paint gun and this is what this is what you're going to do or I said well how do you think we should approach this right so he doesn't make a big deal out of the fact that I'm a woman he uh, he supports me he supports what I'm doing um, he would support me regardless um, but he's not taking it from me and doing it for me he's explaining he 100% has confidence and faith in me even when I don't I right, think that's like right, the biggest right, right, thing right. and that's so many women who come out to the build express is having somebody just trust them implicitly and believe that they can do the thing right so when full fledged membership yeah so when you're team, a dude yeah. and you have somebody that you're in charge of mentoring and and a young you know tech whether male or female comes up to you and asks you a question like to be able to confidently say like you got this like you know the answer right and not in a like in an obnoxious way right. but a I, I have full faith that you can figure this out. That's huge. It's the confidence in, in somebody. That, Those are all beautiful things. That, that, that thank you. That, that super resonates, especially for me and my wife. She won't listen to this, but uh, she she will recognize that my biggest problem, and I think this is a problem for a lot of men, is that you instantly want to move to problem solving. Right. Like, let me. Okay, I'll take care of it. And it's like, you don't. A lot of times when a problem comes up, you're just supposed to listen. Right. And just you know help help in that you are you're helping by helping the person be heard yes. be seen acknowledging that there's an issue you don't she didn't ask for help directly in solving it per right. se now if that does happen then you then kicks in the other device which totally. is you don't, you don't have to do it for them either but show but maybe, you can show right. you can explain and that's where mechanics are even worse right? right i think like men in general get that bad rap of like oh we're going straight into solution mode right. mechanics like that's what we do Right? right, like oh, here's a problem. Physically Let me fix it. Let me jump in and diagnose it right, and fix it. Right, and right. I do. I catch myself doing it. I'm like oh, I see what it is. Let me just jump in and do it. And I have to stop myself because, especially when we're on deadline. When we're on deadline, then everything changes. But um. <laughs> I mean, I, I saw that like you know I I, I did uh, I, I uh, drove Pikes Peak this year and I had a crew chief, awesome guy, Jason Schmidt. But he had a lot of younger guys that uh, you know he said like do X. And like, you know, they, they tried to do X and when they couldn't right. do X he would say, This is actually how X is done but he, he trusted them enough that they, to you know, go do it, yeah. To go do it. Yeah. And it was it was yeah. and they, you know, they were much younger, you know, like college kids type thing. Yeah. And um, yeah, that is a good well, it's way the, to it's teach. the easy well yeah, it's the easiest thing to do, right? They that's part of the, the, the trick or the fallacy of wanting to be the problem solver because it's like the, here's the car doesn't start well let's start the car right like let's just let's just get it done let's not actually worry about teaching right. somebody how, how to that, figure it out right it's like you know you know, give a man a fish. Give a woman a fish, right? Teach, right. teach a woman a fish. Yeah, right. yeah. yeah. How, to, how to be a good mentor believe that they have every right to be there treat them with respect give them the opportunity to learn and to grow give them the space to mess up and acknowledge yeah, when yeah. it's when they do mess up that it's okay. So, so not around the deadline. Yeah, <laughs> right. And validate. I, right. Validate yeah, yeah, that yeah. like everybody makes mistakes. I think that's a really big thing. I was talking with a woman recently, and she said one of the, the guys that she works with, you know, will act like he's never made a mistake in his life, and how validating it was for her to hear from me when I was like, yeah, dude, I messed up like four times this morning. Like <laughs> she's like, oh, you mess up too. I'm like, yeah, we mess up. Like that's what we do. Like sure. <laughs> that's life, man. Right. So well. This was um, this was great. I'm really glad that we got a chance to actually do this. And you know, when we we had such a great time when you yeah. came in studio. But that feels. I mean, we've done now. I think probably 20 episodes in between, Johnny and I. Yeah, at least. Yeah. At least, yeah, yeah. and uh, it feels also kind of like a long time ago. I know for you, right. it's probably like both seconds <laughs> and years, right? <laughs> totally. Uh, added to your life, but also how quickly SEMA came around with yeah. this project. But it's look, it's it's really amazing when you can um, talk to somebody and and that they're promising something amazing, and they're not done with it yet, and then you can show up a few months later and it actually has uh, delivered and it's beyond uh, any expectation. So thank you, uh, thank you to yeah. all the women, all the people involved, all the sponsors involved in Iron Maven. But, but yeah. and, and and like personally, like, thanks for doing it. What a cool thing. Right. Yeah. That's and thank why, that's you why you gotta do another one. <laughs> so we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll come back it. to that but you, I want to thank you, more I want to thank you guys for having having me on and oh, for yeah. helping share the story and for having me on a second time and for coming all the way to Sema to see the unveil to see her in, in all of her glory and um, to sit down with me again it's just fantastic and you guys are you guys are awesome beyond awesome. welcome it was fun right. Motor Trend fan 
So um, thank you again. And if you guys are listening or you're watching, you want to know more about what we're talking about, you can go to motortrend.com. Check it out. You just go to Google right now. Type in Iron <laughs> Maven PV544. Uh, that's probably the fastest way to see yep. uh, the beautiful vehicle on all her resplendent rebel berry color. And uh, thank you so much, Bogey, for, yeah, for being here. Thank you, guys.